You're watching Tim's Wild Kitchen, where I wander about Scotland, trying to catch things, hunt them, forage for them, and then take them back to my kitchen and cook them. Hope you enjoy it. Here we are in sunny Murrayshire, <laughs> first rain for three weeks and we're in my purpose-built World War II concrete rabbit bunker to try and blat a couple of bunnies. Two, two, so we haven't got too much range and uh, if the rain keeps off just steady like this we should get a couple with any luck. Just over the top of here is a row of gorse and they're hopping around in front of there so see if we can get one or two more as we're going along. I like rabbit, it's tasty isn't it? With the rabbits, should I successfully secure a few for the pot? Um, which would be more down to luck than judgment, I think. <clears throat> I used to blame it on my scope, but obviously it can't be that now. Um, I like eating, I like eating rabbit, right? But it's not my favorite meat. I don't think it's anyone's favorite meat. It's not got a huge amount going for it in terms of there's not a lot of fat. If you get the cookery wrong, it's a bit stringy. If they're really old, they can be quite tough. So it's advanced cookery, right? You've got to know what you're doing. Um, however, on the flip side of that, it's incidental meat, right? No one's deliberately farming the rabbits. They have to be controlled to, you know, stop damage to crops and whatnot. And so to kill them and not eat them, at that point, that's just completely ethically bonkers, right? So that balances the scales up nicely. And once you've got a few dishes, you know, young rabbits in the middle of the summer, they're easy, you can roast them. These bad boys, they're going to need a little bit more careful cookery. It's coming marginally closer, marginally closer. That was hit, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely hit, flipping. I was going to say that one of the nicest things about Scotland is that there's so many rabbits, but there's much nicer things about Scotland, but it is nice to be somewhere where there's loads of rabbits again. You know, down in Devon, there weren't very many rabbits, and up here, it's quite nice, we've got a few rabbits. But people forget that they're an introduced species, but you know, how long do we go back in history before we decide something's native? It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Nice little bunny, and this is youngster, probably sort of half grown, two thirds grown. It's going to make really good eating, and it's a good time to get it before he's eating all the grass. <laughs> so, what are you doing with it? Well, this one. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna. I think I might cure them and smoke them slightly. Mm. Yeah, nice. and then. Yeah, I might do a couple of different dishes with it, we'll see. Yeah. So it was nice to have an early start on the rabbits uh, in the airfield there, managed to get a couple. Um, and I was kept nice and warm on what was very much a brisk northern Scottish morning by my nice wool power and Sasta kit, so thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> managed to get a few bunnies uh, and uh, managed to have a couple in reserve as well, so we'll crack on with a few recipes for them. Having prepared your rabbits, before they can be smoked, they need to be cured. There's two ways of doing that, dry curing or wet curing. 
these are going to get wet cured. I think with things like rabbit or whole, and whole small animals, it works better than a, than a dry cure. So in here, I've got my brine that I've already made and it's cooled down and that's got the salt in it that's going to cure the meat and the curing of the meat is what helps to alter the protein as well as preserve the meat, soften it and tenderize it. It alters the protein so that when we then take it out of the brine and dry it out, it gets a sticky layer on the outside called a pellicle and the pellicle is the bit that the smoke particulates from the smoker stick to. This is even more important if you're cold smoking because otherwise you just don't get any flavour on the meat at all. All right, so to make the brine, I use a recipe from this book from Fergus Henderson uh, from a long time ago. I don't know where he got it from, but the proportions are perfect. Um, and so I use half the recipe. So that's six cloves, six black peppercorns, three bay leaves, two liters of water, 200 grams of caster sugar, 300 grams of fine sea salt, and six juniper berries. And then I add a few other things, some fennel seeds, some star anise, uh, and a bit of a bit of chili just to pimp it up. He uses white sugar, I use demerara, but apart from that, the quantities are the same. So once you've heated that up enough to dissolve it all, cool it back down again, and then your rabbit can go in there. Now it's not a long thing. If I wanted to boil these rabbits after they came out, like a sort of pressed rabbit ham or something like that. I'd probably leave them in there for six to eight, maybe even 10 hours. But a rabbit is quite a small thing. It doesn't need to be in here for a very long time. Because I'm gonna cold smoke these and then use them for further cookery, I'm just gonna give them two hours in the brine, then I'll take them out, dry them off, leave them exposed to the air in the fridge for at least another hour so they go a bit sticky before they go in the cold smoker. Come on, Dan, out through the old boot room. It's a bit behind the scenes, isn't it? <clears throat> and here's my beautiful Bradley Smoker, my new favorite toy. Um, if the crisper, easy on boots are easy to put on, this is an easy to use smoker. The controllability from the digital controls is brilliant. I've resisted for years because I sort of didn't want to get stuck in a situation where um, <clears throat> I couldn't smoke on the go. So I've got a couple of old fashioned sort of homemade smokers that fit in the van quite easily. I can take them around with some old sawdust and just make whatever I like. But the controllability of this is just brilliant. So I basically, what I've done is I've taken it to the next level as well, is they've sent me a couple of different types of smoking briquette or biscuit to try. I've got some pure oak ones, but I've also got some um, some whiskey barrel ones, and obviously we're in Scotland, so I thought we'd use the whiskey barrel ones, but I found it was a bit too strong, and I wanted a bit more oak and a bit less whiskey. So I've mixed them up for the slow, mix, flow, for the slow cold smoking, so it goes sort of whiskey, oak, whiskey, oak. All right, so it, we're getting a little bit more oak for our whiskey, as it were. All I do now is I switch it on here. I don't want any heat, because I'm cold smoking, but I could take the oven up to 120 C if I wanted to, and do a sort of more, uh, slow cook barbecued smoky affair in that. Uh, I can set the timer here. Now I know that I want these rabbits to smoke for two hours. So I just drop the timer down to two hours. No heat, away she goes. So here's my nice smoked rabbits. The astute amongst you will be wondering what's happened to the very front ends. Well, um, there's a lot of work involved with getting the skin off the front end of a rabbit and using the legs. If it's been a neatly rifle shot in the head, that can be worthwhile. Um, sometimes I just don't bother. I just cut the front ends off. They make perfect Scooby snacks for the dogs. Um, and then I, I keep these, obviously I'm very careful to clean here um, excessively. These have been in the brine and then just come out of the smoker. So they went in a brine for two hours, then they've come out of the smoker once they've been dried off from the brine, they've gone in the smoker. They come out of the smoker, another two hours in there with a cold smoke. And then you've got these brilliant sort of perfect bits of rabbit. You could then just safely keep those in the freezer as they are. But what I like to do, take them one stage further. I like to separate the saddle from the leg because I'm going to use the saddle for one recipe and the leg for a different recipe. So I use a knife to cut down to the bone, a little Chinese chopper to finish the job. That takes the saddle off. And then I'll separate the legs as well while I'm here. Take the tail off. 
stretching out as it were, the base of the spine. Again, that can be saved for a bit of stock. Uh, just do the other one quickly. I'm just looking for where the hip sort of joins the side of the animal. That's the marker. Go down through there. Put that one over there. Same here. If you haven't got a chopper, don't worry. You know, uh, just use a decent knife or a pair of poultry shears or even, even some well-washed garden shears or a stout pair of kitchen scissors should be fine. So I'm gonna start by roasting the uh, <coughs> rabbit with some butter. And that's gonna happen in a hot pan over here. And the thing about a hot pan is actually, you don't want it to be insanely hot, but you do want the pan well heated so that it doesn't go cold when you put the meat in. So these nicely cured and smoked bits of rabbit won't, won't need a particularly high heat. We just want to push some heat through them, transfer, um, just to transform the old uh, proteins a bit. Uh, add a couple of bay leaves just for some more aroma. And they're just going to cook for about five minutes, turning occasionally. Apart from the bay leaves, there's no additional seasoning required because obviously these have been cured, got a lot of flavour in them already. Spooning a bit of the hot butter over it just helps to evenly distribute the heat through. One of the things people forget when you're cooking stuff in a pan is that the fat is not just there to add flavour and moisture. Um, it's actually acting as a medium to transfer heat from the pan into the product you're cooking. So by all means, if you want to keep it low fat, drain lots of it off. It's not going to permeate too far in there. You know, you can always drain the butter off, but whatever fat you use, use a bit during the cooking process because you'll never get it to cook properly otherwise. It just won't transfer the heat evenly and then it'll end up overcooking, trying to get it where you want it to be. There's quite a bit of butter left in here um, and it's all going to be lovely and smoky but I don't want all of it necessarily when I'm cooking the asparagus. I want that to be a sort of slightly more uh, searing experience rather than a roasting experience. Yeah, it doesn't need blanching, it's nice and fresh. It's just going to cook in there in a couple of minutes. Roll those around, toss them over, let them cook for a minute or two. When you're cooking asparagus without boiling it or steaming it, it's a little bit of a more fine process because it suddenly gets to the point where enough steam generated by itself and captured within it has kind of softened it enough. So you don't want it to overcook. So be a, a bit like cooking meat, you need to be aware how much heat you're getting in there. Once it starts softening, I'll probably take it out and just sit it there with the rabbit, keep warm. And now I just want to taste a few breadcrumbs with a little bit of wild garlic to uh, give us some flavour. I've washed my wild garlic. Nothing worse than a bit of wild garlic ruined by a bit of gritty bird poo or something. Right. I'm really just tasting these breadcrumbs. Um, there'll be some residual oil in the pan, but not a lot. Just want to taste them up. Give us some crunch. Okay, so all that's left to do really is uh, sort of assemble the dish. So <clears throat> I'll just use one of these rabbit saddles, I think. And it's a bit of a tricky task getting the, the meat off because of the shape of the spine on a rabbit. So you, well, you can see where the midline is, I think you just cut down there, but actually you need to be slightly off the middle when you start cutting so that you can get around the little bones that stick out at the top of the spine. But once you're in, you just push the knife along the bones 
and you can see we've got a nice bit of cured smoked rabbit on the inside but on the outside it's all roasted and gorgeous looking just deal with those nice but don't waste these okay first of all there's a little chefy treat on the back which is the little fillet of the rabbit you can eat those that's a nice thing and then all the flavor left here you can put those in a pan with a little bit of water and make a little stock that's going to be awesome for use at a later date um, <clears throat> Now the temptation with your rabbit is to slice the loins that way. I actually quite prefer the texture and the, the look of the thing too if we slice the little badgers lengthways. And then from here it's a very simple job just to uh, assemble the, the dish. So I get a couple of nice spears of asparagus couple of slices of that lovely smoky, half cold smoked, half roasted rabbit. Playing with the textures there as much as the flavours. Just throw those things together, really like that. And then I've got my lovely wild garlicky tasty breadcrumbs. But before I put those on I'm going to use a little bit of the butter from the pan just to help dress it up a bit. Lovely little tasty, almost pan gratata kind of style wild garlic breadcrumbs going on. Then I want a little bit of lemon, but to back up the little bit of lemon, I've got some wild sorrel leaves from the garden, quite small, but they're very pungent. So I'm gonna back up the acidity factor of the lemon with a little bit of sorrel action. So we've got nice seasonal local asparagus, we've got lovely wild sorrel leaves from the garden, brilliant wild rabbit and then just going to finish that with a little bit of parmesan, just a little bit on there, just to finally lift it up and finish the dish, bring it together. So a bit of faff in the lead up to making the dish, right, we've gone uh, to all the effort of hunting the rabbit, we might as well go through the effort of brining it, smoking it and then finishing it is actually very simple, just a few sort of handful of simple ingredients that you have kicking around that are beautiful and in season and you can see that when you put it together just with a light hand it comes up quite nicely. Smoked roasted rabbit with asparagus and garden sorrel. If you enjoyed what you've just seen and what you've just seen is what we've just done not something else then subscribe here. Thanks!